Welcome to the recovery. Words from none other than our own Treasury Secretary, Timothy Geithner. It was also the title of a New York Times op-ed he wrote just about a week ago. While progress is slow, it is happening, Geithner says. This, while another op-ed in Bloomberg, well, it says a little different. In fact, a Boston University economics professor writes, quote, the U.S. is bankrupt. Here to weigh in on these very different takes is Mike Norman, chief economist with John Thomas Financial. Hey there, Mr. Norman. So who can we trust? Secretary Geithner, economics professor Lawrence Kotlikov. I mean, is the U.S. economy really bankrupt? Well, look, uh, uh, Lawrence Kotlikoff, uh, first of all, I don't know if we could trust Geithner, but I could tell you this with 100% certainty, Lawrence Kotlikoff is insane. And if he actually believes what he wrote in that article, then he is 100% certifiable. I mean, I don't know where he got his degree. Maybe it's a mail order degree. I know people who never took a course in economics in their lives and would run circles around this guy just from the standpoint of common sense. This whole notion of bankruptcy is a non-starter in a country that issues its own currency and where all of its debts and obligations are denominated in that currency and where there is no convertibility into gold or some other currency at some fixed rate of exchange. I mean, it's like saying if the world became too populated that there's not going to be enough gravity to hold people on here. It is absolutely ridiculous. So the you're saying... The only argument you can have, Christine, the only legitimate argument that you can have is whether or not the government, in the issuance of its own money to satisfy its obligations and to keep the economy running, whether the issuance of that money is going to lead at some point down the road to some kind of hyperinflation. And guess what? Uh, neither Lawrence Kotlikoff nor the IMF nor these dishonest folks in the Deficit Commission, none of those people have spent even five seconds on examining that. You know why? Because it won't happen. Because the very logic of it is, if the government spends and that raises employment and it raises the output of goods and services, you're not going to get an inflation. These people are subversive. I think Kotlikoff is, is anti-American. I think, frankly, it's an act of sedition. I mean, we should bring back the Sedition Act because all this does, this is fear-mongering. It gets people very, very worried. And worst of all, it gets these, these uh, you know, uh, numbskulls in Washington believing that this is based on real economics when it's not. All right, well, let me, something? let's... I'll give you a great example. Some countries that follow the prescriptions of Lawrence Kotlikoff, countries like uh, Libya, okay, countries like Equatorial Guinea, countries like Estonia, which have virtually no debt, but guess what? Their unemployment rate is 30%. Uh, they're mired in, in economic uh, malaise. This is the kind of prescription that he wants to foist upon Americans. All right, well, let's, we Mike, this, I want to look at, um, yeah. Yeah, you talk about this, uh, he's anti-American. Let's turn to Secretary Geithner, obviously, uh, the head of the U.S. Treasury. Um, this is part of his op-ed that he wrote. First, the premise that we are back on a path of growth. He also says exports are booming and he says the government's investment in banks have already earned $20 billion in <laughs> profits for taxpayers. I want to get your thoughts on these points. Certainly uh, a difference from what Mr. Kotlikoff has said. Well, look, so, I mean, we were on a path of recovery. It's clear. Look, Christine, we went from a 6.5% rate of contraction in the fourth quarter of 2008 to now a modest expansion of just under 3%. So we were. The problem is, I think now, and it's something that I've been saying here, if we start to embrace these, these misguided ideas that we have to pull back now, we will go back down. On the points about exports, look, trying to make the United States become an export nation, that's, that's just silliness, in my opinion, because the only way we're going to achieve any sort of comparative advantage in exports is to keep our wages low and keep our currency down. In the end, what kind of a gain is that? And you know, well, I want to stop you really quick, Mike. Let me just stop yeah. you really quick because we're talking about exports. Um, Secretary Geithner, not the only person. I want to turn really quick uh, to the president, President Obama, also focusing on what is really issue number one for most Americans: the economy. Let's hear wow. what he has to say about exports. I've called for doubling our exports within the next five years. 
so that we're not just buying from other countries. I want us to sell to other countries. So once again, this issue of exports really at odds with what we're seeing, especially just yesterday. We saw the U.S. Commerce Department come out and say that imports are up and there's a drop in exports, creating a wide, the widest gap in trade since October of 2008. Now, I hear you. You're saying that this is not an export economy, but what about this trade gap? The trade gap is in our favor, Christine. I mean, think about it. What is the exchange here? The exchange is we receive goods from other countries, goods that are a part or make up our standard of living, things that we use every single day, and we exchange for that our currency. So, I mean, we get the benefit of the real assets while the other nation that is trading with us or exporting to us, all they want to do is they have a desire to save in U.S. dollars. So, for them to get the dollar, they have to sell us their stuff. We have the benefit. What our policymakers want to do now, including the president, is turn that around. And I think the only way to achieve what he's after, this doubling of exports in five years, the only way, Christine, that that's going to happen, you've got to suppress the wages of working Americans. You've got to keep our currency down. What kind of a trade-off is that? Our real terms of trade actually go down in that situation. We become poorer as a nation, not richer. Yeah, we might create some jobs, but there's better ways to create jobs than shipping off all of our real wealth for the benefit of foreigners in exchange for some non-convertible currency. What, uh, a Chinese yuan? I mean, it's silly. It's so ridiculous. Chief, John, Chief Economist with John Thomas Financial, Mike Norman, always good to get your perspective.